Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson in the Cypress automation playlist. Now that we have seen how we can write our first test in Cypress, let's see how we can optimize this further. So we are going to use some best practices while using the get method in Cypress. Now in this current test, as you can see, we are using the get method and we are directly passing the h1 element here. Although this works, it is not the best practice. Also, if we look at uh, the get command, it accepts a number of different things. Like we can pass uh, the classes like the buttons or the links, or even we can pass the IDs of the elements. But in Cypress, it is the best practice to instead use data attributes to identify your elements rather than using the elements itself or using the properties like the classes or IDs. The reason is uh, very simple because in JavaScript, classes and IDs are used for styling the elements. So uh, it can change over time. Whenever the developers are working on it, they can change these IDs and classes of these elements. And if that happens, then we need to again um, rework on our tests because they will start breaking. And that is the reason in Cypress, uh, it is recommended that we use some of the data attributes for the elements uh, if they are available. So uh, we are going to use the data test attributes specifically so that uh, we can make sure that these attributes are solely used for testing purpose and they are not going to change because there is a change uh, in the design of the particular uh, web application. Okay. So let's see how we can use this to update our tests further and especially our get a method uh, through which we can select a particular element. Okay. So here, um, as you can see, we have used uh, the H1 element here in the get, right? So let's go back to the uh, website. And here uh, we are trying to capture this particular element, right? So now uh, what we can do is we can also inspect this element. Right, and then uh, when we inspect this element, you will see that uh, it is under uh, h1 tag, that's correct, but that styling could always change, right? So h1 could become h2 or h3 or h4, right? And we don't want to uh, go into that loop where we have to change our test again and again. So rather than that, uh, we can use something called the data test attribute here, right? As you can see, the data test value is hero heading. And this is something uh, which will not change. And in Cypress, it is recommended to use this kind of attributes if they are available, okay? So uh, we are going to do exactly that. So let's copy this, okay? And let's go back to our Cypress here. And here uh, we are going to use the data test attribute now okay so we are going to remove this and then inside square brackets we are going to write the data test attribute so data test equals to and we'll put the value here okay and this is how it should look like so we are using a data test attribute uh, and with its value so that this element could be identified using this and then uh, we are using the contains method to check whether the text is uh, as per the expected value or not. So now uh, let's go ahead and save this and let's see if our test is still passing, right? So let's go here and save and then let's go to our Cypress. And here you will see that uh, our test is still passing, right? So it is first going to this website and then uh, it is using this get method to get the element uh, using this data test attribute and then it is uh, checking that whether it contains this particular text or not okay so this is how uh, you can use the data test attributes okay for each and every element uh, whenever you are using this get method that's all for this particular video if you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.